how to call a custom stored procedure from BPC Advanced Logic. The first thing we want to do is create the store procedure. So to create a store procedure in SQL Server Management Studio, we type create proc CSP, my stored proc, whatever we want to call it. I'm going to give it three parameters. The first one is called log table, and that's a system name. The next one is called scope table, and that's system name. And the next one we'll do comment, and that'll be character field. We'll give it 200. So BPC is going to pass me the name of a log table. If I write records into that log table, it will get converted into a text file, which will be the log file for the stored procedure. This is the same log file that appears when you um, view the status on a data manager package in BPC. So this is, I'm going to write some records into that log file. But I'm going to have to use Dynamic SQL to write records into this log table because all they give me is the name. They don't give me an object. So I'm going to do this. Exec, insert, log table, select, So I'm just going to add an entry that says, hey, this, this store procedure was called. But then let's do some other things. Let's put a couple of other log entries there. Um, log table equals OK, we'll copy that down. Um, let's also tell it the um, scope table and then let's tell it the comment that's what the comment is okay, so I'm going to execute this and since I executed it I'm going to go ahead and change this to alter in case I want to make some changes to it later so all the store procedure is going to do right now is when it's called, it's going to write some entries into the log table so that we can see that it actually ran. So that's the first step that I want to do. So what I'm going to do now is I have to have a logic set up to call that. And in this case, I just want that store procedure to be called every time a user submits data into BPC. So of course, I'm going to put it in default logic. So the syntax that BPC likes for running a stored procedure is star run stored procedure equals, and then it's the stored procedure name. And I like to put DBO because it's the fully qualified uh, name within the database. <clears throat> And now I've got to pass it these three parameters because those are the parameters that the store procedure expects. So the first one is log table. BPC has a reserved word percent log table percent that it will send in. Now I'll put brackets around it because in SQL Server when you put brackets around, you always put brackets around table names, field names, various system names. So BPC is going to pass it in just like I tell it. So I'm going to put brackets around it. And then the second parameter that I told it was scope table. BBC also has another reserved word called scope table. So I can do that and it will pass in the scope table name. And then the last thing I have was comment. So I'm just going to put this is my default logic comment. And then I'm going to close it off. And the next step is very important. I have to do commit because it will not execute the stored procedure until it reaches the commit statement. So I'm going to validate and save that. And it tells me it's successful. So I'm going to close that. And I want to go and just look and make sure that that is actually in there. So this is default LGF. You'll notice the path. It's in the web folders path, app set, the admin app, and then the name of the app. 
And here's what I just got through typing in. This is my default logic comment. And then when I validated and saved it, it came back like this. Notice it's all in uppercase. Um, and why is my commit statement gone? I think the commitment statement should be in there as well. It is. Okay. So now I want to test it. So here's an input schedule that I created. It's very simple. It just has two employees down the side, a handful of accounts here, um, and then some weeks worth of time here. And so let me um, expand it to make sure that it's ready to be used. Okay. And I'm going to change this to 100. And I'm going to send that to the database. It tells me one record is going to be sent. And it is. And now I want to go and look at the log that the store procedure should have generated. And where that will be is in this folder. I'm in the web folders path, the app set, the app, and then private publications, and then the username, and then temp files. When you, when you submit a number to BPC, will always create this file called debuglogic.log and that's where my log is going to be. So I'll open this file up and here's the header information, information about the, um, the scope that was sent into it and here is where it's executing my store procedure, DBO, CSP, my stored proc. Notice that the name of the log table is a generated name so it's generated a table and it's passed me the name of that table generated a name of a table of a scope file and it's passed me that and then here's the comment that I put in there. And you'll remember that I typed in some um, entries into the into the log table that are now shown here as well. So this is working as expected so far. But I'd really like to find out what's in that scope table. So let's do a little more digging on the scope table. So this is basic log information and then this is going to be scope table. Now the scope table is going to be a table with two columns in it and it's and it's formatted like this. So that's basically the structure of the table that I'm working with. So I want to get at that table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write some more statements here. Uh, let's put a header record. The header record is going to say dimension member. Okay. And then I want to put one row into the log table for every uh, dimension and member pair that are being passed in. And I have to go back to this variable to find out what the name of my scope table was. So that should write records into my log that show me what um, data was scoped for my store procedure to run. So I'm going to execute that to update the store procedure. So that's been updated. And um, let's go back and submit a different number. So let's put 75 for this and we'll send it. And it really doesn't matter what I'm Sending in, I just need to send, I need to change something so that it forces uh, BPC to run default logic. Okay, so that was submitted. And now let me close and reopen that file, which is here. And let's go look at the log. Okay, so we've got the same entries here for the log. You'll notice that it's a different log file names this time. I don't know if you remember what the old ones were, but these are generated as new new names each time you run the, the store procedure. But here's the part where we were logging the scope table 
values. So dimension and member. So it's telling me that in my activity dimension, it's service ACT. In my category dimension, it's plan. Data source dimension, it's input. Detail, it's no detail. Employee, it's, it's Steve Cohen project. You can see all the different values. And that's exactly as I would ex expect because that's what um, I input data into. But now let's do one last test. Let's do um, let's input to several intersections and see how that affects the scope table. So this time I'm going to input a number to here and to here and to here and to here. So I've input four records. Two of them were to this employee to these two weeks and two of them were to this employee these two weeks. Okay, and now let's go look at our log file again. Okay, and now we'll see that there are two employee records identified in the scope file and there are four weeks identified in the scope file. So in a nutshell, we created a basic stored procedure to um, call from within BPC advanced logic. We added it into the default so that it would run every time we submitted data. We could also put it in a different logic file, but then we would want to call that from a package. Um, and in that log file, or in the stored procedure, we did a couple things. We were able to use the system generated log name, the system generated scope table name, um, to log some entries in the log table and to investigate what scope would be valid uh, for that calculation. So what scope BPC was telling the stored procedure that it, that it needed to recalculate. 